Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while. Uh, apologies for the microphone quality. I'm on my laptop, I'm on the road, so I don't have my proper mic with me. So this is the what I believe to be the very first Fire interactive dashboard that's using the data from the community. Uh, so a bit of background, I did the Fire survey, which was basically trying to replicate the Stack Overflow developers survey that they do every year. Um, I ran that early in 2020. And this dashboard is basically the results of that survey. I actually have all the results, the singular questions and the results of those questions on uh, my blog in this post here. If you go to the front page, you can go to the blog post here that explains the mythology and um, it goes into a little bit more detail on the survey itself. But this dashboard is actually using a proper data model with everything connected to it. So um, it gives just a, a bit a bit better insights into the data um, and maybe we can spot a few trends and do some analysis which is really cool i haven't seen anything like this being created in the fire community so if you if there is something like this created i'd love to see it so please put something in the comment section below so i thought i'd make this video to explain how to use the dashboard so there's three main pages, the profile investing and miscellaneous. So if you actually did the survey, there was like a user demographic section, which is the profile, um, questions about how you invest. And then there was just some fun questions, which is the miscellaneous section. So real quick, I'm not gonna go into every visual, but basically uh, along the top, you have your filters or your dimensions where you can splice and dice your data. And on the very top right-hand corner um, is a little submissions scorecard. And what this is representing is how many people have filled out the survey. So right now, with no filters applied, you can see that there's been 654 people that have filled out the survey. If I add a filter, like, so I only want to look at the data for males, for example, you'll notice when I click that filter that that submissions uh, number changes to 488, which is important to know because sometimes if you're looking at, like, a data point, and there's only been like two people that have filled it out, you, you know, it, you might want to take that value with a little grain of salt because there hasn't been that many people that have um, contributed to that data set. Um, so hopefully the visuals are pretty self-explanatory. Um, what I will say, I'll go into like these, these scorecards here, these KPIs, uh, debt, yearly expenses and savings rate, because that might be a little bit confusing. I have added a little info tab here, or an info button, which you can click. And basically it says the below KPIs are the median values from the data set. So the reason I chose medium is I want I needed a way to represent what the overall debt was throughout the whole survey. And I thought using the median was the, the best metric to use because some people might have a debt of like, um, you know, millions of dollars worth of debt and that can skew the average quite a bit. So I think medium is a, a better representation of the data. Now, one thing, this dashboard has been created in Power BI, and if you haven't used it before, one of the coolest things about Power BI is pretty much everything on the page is interactive. So the, the filters are pretty obvious, like you can slice and dice the data by um, age cohort, you know, education level, um, industry that the, the people are in, stuff like that. That's pretty obvious. But what might not be so obvious is that every little bar chart and like data point is actually a filter as well. So in this map visual, for example, if you wanna know um, what the medium debt is for people in Western Australia, you can actually click this little dot here and you can see that the debt updated along with all the other visuals. And so that's really cool. And we can get some um, really cool analysis and trends using uh, different data points and using different filters. So I'm really excited to see what people come up with and like what insights people uncover using the data set and using this dashboard. Um, moving on to the investing page, uh, there's probably two visuals I just want to speak about because most of the visuals I hope uh, you know um, make sense without me having to explain them. But the portfolio splits average one, I want to just talk about that a little bit because it's, it's a pretty cool visual. And um, the reason I went with average is because in Power BI, the medium median value doesn't account for blanks and null values. So the because a lot of people didn't put anything in for like gold, for example, um, the median value was zero, which I didn't really like. And um, I just went with average. So feel free to you know download the data, which is available on that blog post. Everyone can have access to the data set and also they can have access to this Power BI file. So you can see what I'm doing here because I do clean up the data a little bit and I'd make some assumptions. So 
um, look at that file. All the steps are in there if you want to dig right into it. Um, and this portfolio, like this is the average of the ent entire data set on average, 22% of people's portfolios is made up of cash, which was a bit surprising to me. And 37% was made up of Aussie ETFs and so on and so on. And the really cool thing about having the data model is if I slice and dice through age cohort, let's go 56 to 65, suddenly you see that gold comes in this, this average portfolio at 6%, which makes sense to me because people in you know the older age bracket, maybe they're a little bit more conservative and they want to invest in gold. So that's really interesting to me. And if we slice the data in the younger people's demographic, what a dramatic difference the average portfolio is here. 90% is made up by single shares. Now, you know, we can make different conclusions about why that may be, uh, but the data is the data. So as we are, you know, as I continue to run this survey each year, the data set's just going to get richer and richer. And I, I think that we can draw more conclusions and better conclusions as the data set gets better. And also as I frame the questions better, because there was a lot of mistakes that I made with the survey, which I've already noted um, down and I'm going to improve in the, the following, in the following years or in the coming years. The only other visual on this page that I wanted to talk about was the ASX listed products visual, the tree map. So there was a question in the survey that was basically, what ASX products do you invest in? And probably to no one's surprise, VAS come out on top, 351 people invest in VAS. And then next is AFI, VGS, A200, you know, all the usual suspects. And if you wanna look at absolutely every single one, you can actually right click this visual and go show us table. And then that table will list out all the products here. And it also gives you the tree map, but it's, um, it's nice to see that, you know, how many people invested in like MFF, which I don't even know what that is. Um, two people apparently invested in, in it, in the survey. Now, as you can see, um, the, the data is not perfect. You know, someone wrote the above question doesn't seem to be taken super into account. That is true, and that was one of the biggest mistakes I made on this survey, so I'm gonna improve that next year. Uh, but I did some cleaning as much as I could, uh, but I didn't clean up the data 100% because I spent way too much time on it already and I just needed to get it out. Um, and then lastly, the miscellaneous page um, had some fun stuff, you know, who do you bank with? What was the medium interest rate of those banks? Um, side hustle, how much you make from side hustling. That, that was a cool one, I thought. Um, what I what I gather out of here is um, I need to get into Amazon FBA. That's you know people are making big money from that. Um, and just on this one, if I click on this bar chart, you'll notice that there's only two people. To see the submissions changes to two here, so that means that only two people out of the 600 or so that submitted uh, that that did this survey, only two people do Amazon FBA as a side hustle. So. Again, take this with a little grain of salt because 120,000 a year, like I don't think that is probably a true representation of the community considering only two people did the submission. Whereas if you look like another one at like match betting, for example, there was 39 people. So again, not as many as I'd like there to be, but you know, more people definitely than two, right? So we can sort of you know, a good, a better indication of what that side hustle on, on average or the medium um, amount of money people make from that side hustle. Uh, and then finally, the word cloud, this was a great, this is an awesome visual, I thought. For those who don't know what a word cloud is, basically, there was a question in the, in the survey that said, why are you pursuing fire? And people sometimes wrote a, a word, they wrote a sentence, or they wrote a paragraph. And what this word, word cloud does is it goes through all the data and it grabs the words that appear in the answer the most and it plots them here or it like makes a pretty little word cloud here. So you can see that on average, freedom, which is the big blue word here, appeared 175 times. That was the most, that was the most common word used on people's answers, which is really interesting. But if we, um, which is actually probably not that interesting, I, I probably would have thought that that would have been up there with one of the most. But if we look at like a younger age cohort, we can see that that the, the most commonly um, appearing word changes and actually time and life and money are actually, our oh, freedom is up there, but it's not as, as uh, popular as the other ones, which is just interesting, I thought. Um, 
and you can and you know we we can slice and dice this data through industry employment like there's so many different ways you can do it uh which is the cool thing about this dashboard but that's basically it how and how it works in a nutshell if you have any questions put them in the comment section below let me know what you think and um yeah hope you guys enjoy it